So this story right here should be a much, much, much bigger story. But since it's Newsmax, it doesn't really get that much play. Newsmax, which is, you know, conservative news organization, very pro-Trump. Newsmax leaders urge staff to soften coverage of Qatar after Gulf Royal invested $50 million in network. Wow. The Washington Post on Tuesday revealed that a Qatari royal, Sheikh Sultan bin Jassim Al Thani, invested $50 million into the hard-right cable news channel Newsmax, which eventually led to staff being told by management to soften coverage of Qatar. We were not allowed to criticize Qatar, a Newsmax employee told the Post. We were told very clearly from the top down, no touching this. The Post spoke to multiple employees on the condition of anonymity to avoid angering the Newsmax CEO, who said they witnessed staff being told directly to ignore Qatar's human rights abuses ahead of the 2022 World Cup. Jesus. The Post added that CEO Christopher Ruddy verbally reprimanded a female host in 2018 for her on-air comments about Qatar, according to two people who saw the exchange. The report explained that Newsmax first reached out to Qatari Sovereign Wealth Fund about a potential investment around 2017. Talks of an investment coincided with the Saudi-led diplomatic blockade of Qatar in 2017, which resulted in multiple Gulf states cutting ties and trade with Qatar and accusing the small, gas-rich country of fueling terrorism in the region. Qatar's ties to Iran, the Muslim Brotherhood, and the state-owned and operated broadcast channel Al Jazeera were major sticking points in the diplomatic crisis. Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Bahrain, and the UAE all banned Al Jazeera in their countries and demanded that that demanded the station be shuttered. Then President Donald Trump initially sided with the Saudis in the crisis and publicly slammed Qatar for having ties to Iran. By the way, I love how, like, just having ties to Iran is the scan. No, the scandal is like all the slavery shit and the treatment of migrants and the treatment of women and Sharia. Like, that's the real criticism. They're flipping out over ties to Iran. I mean, fucking Saudi Arabia is worse than Iran. And that's our buddy. That's everybody's buddy, right? That's all of our allies' buddy. So what are we talking about? Jesus, the misplaced priorities are so insane. Sheikh Sultan bin Jassim Al Thani made his investment in Newsmax in 2019 and 2020 through a London-based investment fund called Heritage Advisors. The Post explained how its reporters tracked the funds. So they go on to explain it. Um, Newsmax spokesman Bill Daddy. Oh, that's awesome. Bill Daddy? Bill Daddy. Responded to the Post report in a statement to Media saying, In 2019, Newsmax received a minority investment from a UK-based fund with a Qatari investor that also invested in a company associated with the current Washington Post publisher. Newsmax coverage of Qatar has always been balanced, including publishing many online and TV reports quite critical of its activities. So, by the way, they point out here, there was also an investment in the Washington Post. This reminds me, CNN, they took money from, was it the UAE or was it Dubai? One of those countries. And they started doing these, like, news pieces that weren't news. They were just, like, a massive infomercial for the country. I don't remember if it was the UAE or Dubai, but Adam Johnson really documented this stuff very well. And so, really what you have here in our news outlet is they're, like, corporate mercenaries for hire, where any country or any billionaire could sort of buy influence. And then, I mean, Jeff Bezos in the Washington Post, like, say no more, right? And this is why people don't trust corporate media. This is why they shouldn't trust corporate media. Look at all the strings attached. Look at all the corruption. Look at all the sacred cows. Don't touch this thing. Don't touch that thing. And this is the perfect example of it right here. Look, there's no way to do this. It's very hard to find any way to fund something like news ethically. I think the closest you can get is sort of like the grant system, like like with uh, PBS or NPR they generally do a decent job, but even now they're taking a lot of private investor money. But like that, like the BBC type model, they tend to be some of the better examples, but there is one better than that, but you're limited in terms of size if you do this this other one, which is crowdfunding, right? Small dollar donations. That's what you guys do for this show. And I like to pride myself because at that point, it's like, it's all about the audience. It's all about you guys. Now, you can run into audience capture issues, right, where people start telling the audience what they think they want to hear, and, you know, that could lead to a whole bunch of weird problems where the truth doesn't come first and honesty doesn't come first. It's more like pandering and preaching to the crowd. That's a problem, but at least in theory, it's more possible. If you have 10,000 people all donating five bucks a piece or whatever, well, a lot of those people also disagree with each other on some shit. So then, and... If you're doing it right, the idea is I'll just come out here and do what I do. 
which is tell the truth to the best of my ability and tell everybody what my opinions are and my biases are up front, right? That's the best you can do. And it is, in my estimation, it's the best way to do it, which is the most ethical way to do it, right? There are the least downsides doing it this way. But what you guys can see here is, God, these, like, established outlets, they're the most corrupt. They're the most disgusting. They're the biggest examples of taking some billionaire's money or some giant corporation's money or some repressive foreign government's money and then softening coverage. Like I said, with CNN, it was either Dubai or UAE, I want to say. You got Washington Post now with Qatar, Newsmax with Qatar, where they, you know, they're saying they literally told them, hey, go soft on them. There are people. What the fuck, man? What the fuck? It's disgusting. And then there's going to be no, this won't be nearly as big of a story as it should be. It won't nearly be talked about enough because, you know, all these other news outlets, they all have skeletons in their closet. And it's like, mm, well, we report on that. People might look into our funding. And it's like, you wonder why, like, trust in this institution has crumbled, right? And also, I just think a lot of these outlets do a bad job hiring people and caring about the truth and their narrative humpers and, in some instances, terminal contrarians. And it's just the whole, the whole thing is gross. Right? And by the way, I'm not exempting new media from a lot of these criticisms, because with new media, like I said, there's other problems. There's audience capture, all sorts. Like, Ben Shapiro puts a fucking, like, read-in ad every seven seconds. When you watch a 12-minute video, you get, like, three ads in a Ben Shapiro video. There's all sorts of problems all over the media landscape. But this is, like, some of the worst right here. I think there's no denying that. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.